Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Harry's. For guys who want a great shave experience for a fraction of what you're paying now, go to harrys.com. Get $5 off your first purchase by entering the code AAA when you check out. And by LegalZoom. Visit LegalZoom.com to save on your legal needs and gain access to a network of legal plan attorneys for guidance. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but provides self-help services at your specific direction. Visit LegalZoom.com and use offer code AAA to receive $10 off at checkout. And by SmartThings, the easiest way to create a smart home. SmartThings lets you control your home using your smartphone from anywhere. For 10% off any home security and solution kit, visit SmartThings.com slash Twit and use the code TWIT10. And welcome to another episode of All About Android, episode 183, recorded on Tuesday, October 14th, 2014. We're your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. I'm Gina Trapani. How's it going, Gina? Good, good. Good to be here. Missing Ron, but he's going to be on in a few minutes, I think. Yeah, he got he got hung up at work, and then he missed his train. It's uh, Yeah, it's just been one of those days for Ron. But he's yeah. going to be here. He's really bummed, and he's rushing right now, so he'll he'll be on probably in like ten minutes or so. Cool. So I think we have plenty to to kind of talk about until we get there. Um, we also have a returning guest, actually, Matteo Doni, test engineer for Skyscanner. How's it going, sir? Very well, thanks. Thanks for having me back on the show. Of course, and thanks for your <laughs> you know, ability or or dedication to the show for coming on at one a.m. in the morning in Scotland. It's crazy, sir. But Thank you. We really appreciate it. I, I, I like <laughs> to consider myself that way. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, let me guess. Uh, well, I guess it's not guessing because you told me before the show began, but it's raining there. Is that right? Is it just blustery cold? Because you're you're in the future right now. You're you're tomorrow. Is there rain in the forecast? Um, there wasn't in the forecast, but there was a bit of rain earlier in the evening. So okay, well, I think we're about to get your rain out here since uh, you are in the future, and you you're you're gonna have a lot to talk about from the future because we have a lot happening in the near future. In in <laughs> where you are, this is happening today, but for us here in the United States, this is happening tomorrow. I know it's very confusing. Uh, tomorrow's news is big and we're gonna we're gonna talk about all of that stuff here in a second we think it's tomorrow's news anyways but we also have a lot of other things we're going to discuss this week uh the htc desire i and the and the htc re hands on with the huddle tablet actually mateo you've you've been playing around with the huddle too and uh you'll be talking a little bit about that bite-sized apps uh, for testing before actually purchasing kind of a uh, potentially a, a new plan that Google has uh, to hopefully inspire people to buy more apps, which is something that Android needs. I think developers need pe more people to buy their apps. So that's probably a good thing. Uh, and so much more. Uh, I just got a message from Ron, by the way, he does say about 10 minutes. So we will talk to him here in a second. In the meantime, let's dive into the news. Ron will be here in about 10 minutes, but wait for Android news, no more. <laughs> wait for Android news, not 10 minutes. Whatever the opposite of 10 minutes is. <laughs> Negative. Uh, cool. All right. So if you've been following, if you've been kind of curious, you've, you've heard on the show or maybe you've read in blogs and stuff like that, there's this thing. There's, there's this thing on the horizon. It's a new version of Android. Before we get there, Google uh, just unveiled three Android ads. We don't really see this very often. Google having advertisements about Android as a platform. They're really short. They're really good. So I say, why don't we just watch them? Because why yeah. not? So here's the first one. Like, okay then. That's awesome. That it's, is a great ad. I, yes. Okay. Before we play any any of the other ones, 
Android, what's it all about? Why, why, why is this ad about Android? What do you think, Gina? Oh, I mean, this is this is about diversity, right? This is about diversity of devices and experiences and manufacturers and people, right? Like the and and I think like they did such a good job of being like this is you know not there is no one true way. There's no one best phone. Like everybody wants something different, and these are all different people, and that make up Android. And Android is this big, chaotic, messy, awesome, amazing, gorgeous community. You know, and you should be part of it, right? Because it's it's everybody. This is this is totally my number. I mean, of course, you know, I'm a complete fangirl. To begin with, but I just I love that they went with this yeah, uh, idea that if this is about you know lots of different folks, lots of different phones. Yeah, for for audio listeners, of course, it's the uh, way way back when on this show we covered the app Androidify, and it's actually the app that we used for our album art. So you know the the characters of the show on our album art for all about Android is from Androidify. So Google is I'm I'm assuming they're using that app because I think that was an official Google app. Uh, to create all different type, you know, sorts of Android characters, and they're just all, you know, crammed on a bus dancing, basically. And it has a total South Park feel to it, too, which yeah. I love. Uh, <laughs> let's. Why don't we go ahead and play the second ad here? The tagline is be together, not the same. Yeah. And like they hit everybody there. They got Hawaiian grass skirt dancers, people <laughs> in wheelchairs, nerds, reader. I mean, like every sort of kind of person. You got a, a, yeah. a, a, a an Android dropping in a, in a parachute. I mean, it's just like, it's a fantastic like visual. And I hadn't even thought about Androidify, uh, Jason, but you're absolutely right. It totally um fits, fits in with that and somebody in the chat room uh was just saying that they that app just got updated too so you know interesting <laughs> there you go i wonder if you have more options with it may i just point out one thing yes Both please ads so far have lots of music in them mm -hmm. google mm -hmm. play music all access and just a, a little aside the bass shake brings all the androids to the yard <laughs> 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 Thank you for going there. <laughs> yeah, cheesy jokes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. You heard it here first. Um, okay, now this one, this one could be a little telling about what we're going to see tomorrow. This is the third ad that was released. Waiting at a bus stop. Somebody's phone's ringing. Hmm. Uh -huh. Not him. Mm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All, all kinds of phones for all kinds of folks is the tagline on that one. And it's basically a bunch of uh, characters at the bus stop waiting, phones ringing, everybody checks their pockets. Finally, the smallest Androidify person there pulls out a phone bigger than everybody standing there and... Uh, yeah, kind of looking at up. it. Kind of looks like what we've seen about the Nexus Six a little bit. It's yeah, huge. If, you, if you pause it, which I did, if you pause it on that giant phone, it has the curve back, like the like the like the Moto X. It has the 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 square is one of the buttons on the bottom. It really does look like the the Nexus Six, right? And it, and the, it has the Nexus L. It has the L uh, navigation with the smaller navigation buttons mm -hmm. from what is likely going to be version L. Uh, the preview and, has the larger navigation, and this I think the actual version is going to have smaller buttons. Right, right. And I just love that everybody cracks up because, like, big phones have been kind of a joke. And I mean, it's, it's obviously they're all cracking up because it's this tiny person yeah. talking on this giant phone. But it's awesome that everyone's just like, whoa, and cracks up because it's, I feel like it's a way of Google, you know, sort of poking fun at, like, some of the crazy stuff that we've seen mm -hmm. through, you know, some of the crazy Android devices that we've seen and how, you know, pe people love them. Uh, kind of even poking fun at phablets a little bit. I don't yep. know. Yep. Um, but, yeah, no, that, that ad is actually my favorite of all of them um the bus stop one even though the other ones have killer killer music good stuff and i love google creating such engaging ads around android just you know not around you know the the devices necessarily but around android as a platform and this kind of further shows google's commitment to making people understand what android is and not necessarily what 
you know, what Google's involvement is with it, that Android is this platform. It supports all these people, you know, all different walks of life, all different types of devices. And uh, yeah, it's got a lot of energy to it. I hope, I hope that this is the sign of something to come, a much larger kind of broader um, PR kind of approach from Google around Android. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if we're actually going to see these commercials, you know, on TV. I mean, you, you yeah. see Chrome commercials on TV. Um, I, I, I kind of want to say, you think it, you think yeah. that you will? I, I don't know. I, I tend to think maybe that this is about developers. Like so, someone on Twitter said to me, oh, well, that's a positive way to spin the fragmentation problem. <laughs> <laughs> which made, which kind of made me laugh. I mean, as we discussed here, I feel like the fragmentation issue is becoming is less and less of a problem. Mm -hmm. um, but but it's true. I mean, yeah, there's there's tons of choice. Uh, there's tons of different devices, and sure, that puts a little bit of a burden on developers around testing. Um, but uh, but yeah, I wonder if this is part of like a developer push. I, I would love to see these ads on TV. I just don't know what this ad would mean. To, I mean, I guess to a regular consumer, this ad means like I get to have the phone that I want. It doesn't have to be the phone that's, you know, Apple decides is the one true best one. Um, but it's still kind of abstract, right? Because it's not about a de specific device. It's about an operating system, which I, I'm not sure if the regular consumer is really tuned into or cares about. Well, yeah, what, what they're tuned into is, oh, the droids, those droids, right. phones, things. And this is one way to do it. It's also kind of, it's also confirmation. Like it's almost like, coolness confirmation, which a lot of advertising, that's what it is, right? Coca-Cola doesn't have all of these billboards because they need them to sell sell their product. They have them to confirm that, yes, you're doing something right. You're part of the Coca-Cola crowd. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, and hope, you know, maybe that's kind of what we're seeing here. What do you think, Mateo? Are, are you going to see uh, these ads in Scotland? Do you see much Google advertising kind of on TV and in the regular media anyways? What do you think? Yes, in the last few years, they've increased their advertising spend on traditional mass media considerably, both in the newspapers, the met metro on the bus, the cinemas and TV. Uh, they tend to be about Google services mm -hmm. or about the Google Chrome stories uh, or, the, or the Nexus devices. But um, I'm hoping to see these ads out in the wild. Uh, the the word Android is starting to make more sense to the average consumer nowadays because they know that it's either iOS or Android. And people are starting to think more in terms of the apps they can get or the phones they get. Is it Android or something else? Yeah. Ooh, apologies, I've just gone back into the dark here. That, that's okay. It's almost Halloween, so we forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> we forgive you if things get a little scary here and there. Uh, that's that's all about Android in a nutshell right there. Uh, okay, so <laughs> so there we go. Three awesome ads. And then, but that doesn't, that, it doesn't stop there, right, Gina? No, there's another video. Uh, I don't know how to, how to intro this. I mean, look, it's Android L, right? We still don't know for sure what the L stands for, uh, but there's another video, and Brian, I don't know if we, we could just show this, uh, that teases what that L might stand for. This is from Google. Is it lemon meringue pie? Lava doing? cake? It's show me sweet. Sweeter? Oh, that's perfect. Lemon drop? <laughs> 5.0. All right. Official confirmation. The next version of Android will be version 5.0. It's on the door. See? It's on the door. 5.0. Oreo. Why is Oreo there? Ladyfinger. I like that the ladyfinger's eating a ladyfinger. Yeah. Cannibalism. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> Notice that lollipop is not there. Yes, at all. I know. And I didn't think licorice was there, but apparently some eagle eye people were like, yeah, if you look in the background, you'll see a couple of strands of licorice. By the way, show me sweet. Oh, okay. Uh, show me sweet. Show me Ron Richards. How's it going, man? Hey, they're sweet. Hey, Ron. <laughs> How you guys doing? <laughs> doing awesome. It's good to have you back, sir. Sorry I'm late. You can see I'm sweaty from running from the train to uh, my back to my apartment, but I've I'm here. So. so been there. There's no Today's there's no better way to start a show than after like a dead sprint for 10 minutes because it's already yep. started. Yeah, yeah today, today's been definitely been a planes, trains, and automobiles kind of day. I started the day in New York City. Now here I am in San Francisco. Let's do it. Awesome. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so uh, did you get a chance to see this uh, this promotional video? I did. I did see it, and, and I think I, – I think, 
this teases that they're going to move away from candy names. Oh, you think? Huh? That's my guess because those, wow, are, those are all a... the obvious options. And even though that yeah, one was miss was missing, I, the, what's behind the door is going to shock everybody. And I think they're going to go in the direction that we talked about in cocktails. So mm -hmm. I that's, think that's the plan. I think that would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, it would be great if they went in the, the direction of cocktails, because then I'd have a reason to stock the studio with cocktails for every show. Uh, <laughs> I just don't think that's going to happen. Uh, Gina, do we have any other clues? We do. Okay, so we've got one, one other, two other things going on. The first is this dude who works at this statue place in New Jersey. Tell me if I'm getting this wrong, but he keeps dropping these hints about licorice on his Google Plus page. Uh, so will Android L be named licorice? This happens to be the, the guy who helps make the statues, of course, that wind up on Google's lawn right outside the Android building. Um, so he, you know, he said a few times, "Hey, what's going on with this licorice?" He's he's hashtagged it. Uh, saying, you know, this Android, I don't know, uh, this, he said, I've never had a great liking for licorice, but damn, Rogiovanni Calabrese, this is one of my people, there are some great flavors out there. Uh, so his Google Plus page has been getting a lot of attention, lots of likes, people are thinking that this is the, uh, this is the big hint, but I think this guy's just trying to get attention, because yeah, we have- or divert. I think, yes, he's I, trying I think to this guy's trying to figure out how to lose his job, that's what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, wow. seriously. <laughs> It's true. It's true. I don't know. I kind of think Google's in on it a little bit. Yeah. 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 The, the really good hint, and this is, I think, this is the tell right here. Yep. Uh, from what I understand, Google employee posts a bug on the in the Chromium bug tracker and screenshots his Android or her Android, and the debug icon in the nav bar of the screenshot is <gasps> clearly an Android head on top of a lollipop stick. Oh. And that page no longer exists, ladies and gentlemen. Uh -huh. They pulled it. They pulled uh, it. Out. Google pulled it. So yep. I think that's it. <laughs> I think <laughs> <laughs> this level of Kremlinism proves it must be true. Yeah, that that it must be lollipop. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, if I, I gone agree. Into that much effort to actually find lollipop, and then it gets pulled. Yeah, it must yep. be true. And all the all the licorice distractions and stuff like that. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's kind of pointing to lollipop. I think lollipop. Pretty soon, we're gonna have the. Rain little lollipops on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Is it too soon to do this? I think it's too soon, dude. I don't Please. know. I don't know. I, I think we'll, they're dum dums. We'll find out what happens no, today. Dum -dums. Yeah. What's that? We'll find out what happens today. We, well, you'll find out today. today. You'll find out today. We have to wait till tomorrow. <laughs> I'm. I, by the way, am going to sleep tonight. I'm not staying up to make today today or tomorrow today. Um. <laughs> So, yeah, so there we go. I think, man, it's really pointing to Lollipop. And uh, you, uh, Does Lollipop open us up to too many obvious suck jokes? Oh, man. Oh, Gina. Uh, now that oh, you I mention it. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I was not I thinking. I didn't think of that. I didn't either. One of my followers on Twitter was like, oh, ha, ha, Android sucks. Oh, and I was like, that, oh. yeah. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. Will, I mean, think think about the headlines, you guys. Will Android Lollipop not suck? I mean, come on. It's yeah. true. It, it does write here. itself. It does write itself. Yeah. yeah. In, in the UK, there's there are things called lollipop ladies. Uh, they're the ones who hold uh -oh. the batons and help kids cross the roads at schools. Oh, okay. See, good. So the next version of Android is a good Samaritan. Essentially, yes. that yeah. that very, I can get on board. Very with. helpful. Very helpful, very useful. Oh, that wasn't a very good flavor of lollipop, by the way. Uh, it tasted like sugar, basically. Let's see here. Okay, so finally, uh, confirming what we've heard from other sources throughout the week. Uh, hopefully, well, possibly confirming. We don't know anything for sure until it happens. Uh, indicating that tomorrow is the big reveal day with a planned posting on the Google blog, similar to what they did last year. Uh, introducing version L, Nexus 6, and Nexus 9. These are sources to Forbes. Well, we've heard a lot of this the past week, that this was probably going to happen. Uh, again, nothing's confirmed. This is all firmly in, in rumor, but uh, 
possibly likely territory. Uh, we could come back next week and be eating crow. Uh, the HTC Nexus 9 is expected to be available for pre-order this Friday, October 17th, with a purchase date, a date of, of shipment and, and uh, you know, going to the store and buy it of November 3rd for $399 for the 16 gig version. $499 for the 32 gig version with LTE. Uh, and the post also says expandable memory, which I find a little odd because doesn't Google not do the expandable memory? I mean, they do with H with, um, with Android one, but that's because in the emerging markets, you know, there isn't a lot of onboard storage and ultimately Google has been really adamantly against expandable memory. So that would be weird if their Nexus device had it, maybe they're returning to it. What do you guys think? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. About face isn't impossible, I suppose. But uh, also, HTC's Boom Sound and uh, some other HTC features might be integrated. But definitely Boom Sound, from what this source was saying, uh, and a brushed aluminum frame instead of all metal. That's to keep the costs low, of course. And then there would be an origami magnetic stand that can be shaped into any shape to prop the tablet up. That sounds interesting. That would be unveiled tomorrow as well. And supposedly, uh, this final little bit here was uh, tweeted out today by <laughs> supposedly retired leaker. I know. I was going to say, I thought, he, I thought he bailed. What's yeah, up? <laughs> he, you know, it's, it's hard to keep a, a leaker down, I guess. Can't stop, won't stop. Yeah. Uh, put out this shot of the Nexus 6, a new shot of it. So, I don't know. This is, this is clearly going to happen because it's scheduled for the day after all that Android uh, records. Yeah. Right? That's kind of so, how I feel. Yeah. Yeah. This is definitely happening tomorrow. Totally. Why I'm do they more do excited that about to the us? phone than the tablet. What's that? I'm, I'm more excited about the phone than the tablet. Uh, but I think that's just because I've been sort of down on tablets lately. I don't know. Yeah. Are, are you guys feeling Are you guys feeling the, the 9 or the 6? I, you know, I, I'm the nine. I don't really care either way about because I, I, I like you. I'm not psyched on tablets. I mean, to still my seven is still working, and I don't feel like I need to replace it. Um, and I'm not excited about the six because it's too. I just want to. I, I want a, a Nexus six that's the same size as my Nexus five. You know, I don't yeah. want yeah, the big phone. Yeah, people in the chat room are saying that. Like, yeah, hey, I want. Yeah. The, I don't want a bigger phone. Yeah. yeah. So, Mateo, of these, is one both. What? Which one excites you? I'm sure I can justify purchasing both. Oh, okay. Um, very nice. <laughs> to me, it's very interesting because it's the first time a Google tablet has a four to three aspect ratio. That is interesting. If the rumors are true. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, the way apps and websites respond to the OS or the OS responds to the content will be interesting. Maybe Google have something up their sleeve we haven't heard yet. Right. Yep. Uh, man, tomorrow could, could be kind of crazy. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, uh, which makes this maybe a little preemptive, but we do have some breaking news. <laughs> well maybe, done, Brian. Maybe, maybe a little bit in advance of <laughs> an actual release, but even if Lollipop isn't, isn't what it is, that was fun for one week, and then I'll have to create a new one next week. Uh, right before we went to air here, uh, Google Glass is getting an update to allow Android Wear uh, notification sync. So similar to what we get on our wrists now, this we're starting to see kind of the uh, the wearification of Google Glass so that they're both kind of uh, on similar pages. So. There you go, which this makes perfect sense that they would unify them, one, and that, two, that you would get all your notifications in Google Glass in some way. So uh, there you go. If you're rocking Google Glass, get this update, and uh, you can start getting notifications from your phone streamed to it the way you do on Android Wear. I got, I got to say, having Android Wear has made me look at my notifications and really start to evaluate what I need to be notified about. Oh, yes. Yes. And uh, I don't have the time to go through it yet, but I plan to because I'm that thing's that thing's and it's, a lot of it's. Google, remember, I was complaining how Google Plus hasn't been giving me a lot of content mm -hmm. on my phone. Mm -hmm. It's just constantly sending it to Android to Android Wear and stuff that's not relevant, and I got to figure that out. Like I'm getting a lot of like commute, like bus line. If I was in Manhattan, oh, you Google was, Now, not Google Plus. Yes, yeah, Google Now. I'm sorry, yeah, not Google yeah. Plus. Okay. Google Now. 
but I was getting a lot of like bus line notifications, stuff like that. I'm like, I'm not taking the bus, go away. And then, you know, so um, I need to spend some time with my Android wear to, to refine my notifications. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's my, people are having, you know, very different battery uh, experiences with Android wear, honestly. Ask yourself what you really need to be notified. What what is so important yep. that you, that needs to pull your attention away from whatever you're doing at that moment? I've used that to kind of analyze what apps I hide from Android Wear, and I hide most of them yep. because yeah. I really don't care if um, somebody just started following me on Instagram or you know what I mean, or or even Google Plus. Unfortunately, and I hate to say it, Google Plus is. Uh, Android Wear notification is really kind of useless to me. Yep. Uh, there's really nothing more that I glean from it except to know that, you know, this person plus one that post. I don't even know what post. I don't know anything about it. Uh, I don't need to know this immediately. So once you strip yeah. it back, your battery life improves. because It's not getting yeah. notified all the time. And it's actually useful. If your wrist buzzes, it's important. Right, yeah. exactly. And like I made the mistake of commenting on a Facebook post and then I got a buzz every time someone liked that post. Yeah. Oh, no. Like, and no, it wasn't no. even one of my posts. Like I just responded to someone else's type thing and that just subscribed me to that post. And mm -hmm. then I was getting the notifications and I was in the middle of a convention. I'm like, ah, I just, I just ignore it. And so, yeah, so I, I need to uh, I need to do that filtering uh, that you, sounds like you've done, Jason, to, to kind of really refine it. Over time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, as you see one that pops up there that you don't need, just hop into the yeah. Wear app. It's really easy to do pretty quickly, actually, on your phone and just you know, yeah. do it there and it's gone. It just, it just seems like anything that's fine tuning, mm -hmm. any of the technology I use is just enough work to not, for me not to have the time. Yeah. But I've got, time. I've got, I've got some downtime over the next couple of weeks. So I'm yeah. hoping to do it like a weekend project. But actually this is related to an email we got, which a uh, similar kind of theme. Uh, Derek in Illinois wrote in and says, you know, hey, I'm a big fan of the show and I listen every week during my 50 mile commute. That's brutal. In episode 182, you discussed the topic of a Android Auto and whether or not it, it was best to limit functionality. Within that discussion, it was brought up that you can use apps like Agent to mute or speak the SMS as you're driving. This highlighted an issue that I have continuously battled with. In a standard day, 75% or more of the messages I get are Hangout messages. These messages are not handled by any of these quote-unquote safe driving apps. So when I make an effort to avoid getting messages while driving, I can't do so. Do you have any suggestions on how to handle non-SMS messages while driving? My one-hour-long, two-turn commute to work makes checking messages very tempting. I can uh, understand that. Yeah, totally. Jeez. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I hadn't considered that aspect, that we get a lot more things, you know, through messaging apps as opposed to just straight SMS right now. And they're they're both really the same kind of distraction. Well, you can right, do it. Texting you can do while it. driving can mm -hmm. be chatting while driving. Right, right? exactly. They're <laughs> yeah. exactly the same. Well, you could do what I did, which is I just unplugged everything from. Um, so currently, I am using Hangouts. I'm using it for SMS, and I um, and I uh, signed out of chat on all, every account I have. So only the only Hangout messages I get are SMS messages. Oh wow! So that's okay. that's one option. Mm -hmm. So you so maybe you could set up some sort of tasker type solution yeah. where when you you know when you get in the car, I don't know how you would do that. If you get one of those uh, tags, one of those RFID tags or something like that, it just picks up some sort of thing where it, then you sign out of Hangouts and sign back in when you're done driving. Mm -hmm. I don't know, J Jason, you threw it up to Google Plus, but it doesn't look like, look like there are any answers. No, so, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, which is it's kind of unfortunate. Like I use Agent, I think I mentioned that last week to um, to detect driving mode on my One Plus One, and then it sends out a message. But yeah, I just I hadn't really considered the fact that if if it comes in as a Hangouts message or a Facebook Messenger message or something like that, uh, those those are distractions that I would love to just kind of block out. Maybe not auto reply, but maybe just not show me. You know, yeah. show me the when I'm parked and I'm walking and and my phone knows that I'm walking. And it's like, oh hey, these came in for you. Um, oh, somebody and, do and that. And a developer do that. NFC tags. That's what I meant. Thank you, oh, okay. JJ, in the chat room. NFC tag. So you get an NFC tag, you put it on your steering wheel, set mm -hmm. up Tasker to say when I'm, you know, with, you know, when I tap this tag, sign me out of Hangouts. That could be a solution. Right. So, right. Yes. So. There we go. Okay. So let's thank our first sponsor of today's episode. Actually, a brand new sponsor, though I don't, I kind of don't feel like they're brand new because I've been using Harry's products uh, for about three weeks now. And my take on this is kind of strange because I've been using the same stuff forever. I've been using, you know, Gillette razor and, oh. you know, just whatever. I've been, I've been using my normal stuff for years. And so I never really kind of considered what it would be like to, to move to something else. And uh, Harry's is, of course, the sponsor of All About Android and a bunch of shows on the Twit Network. And I've, I've realized how awesome shaving can actually be. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I feel cheesy saying that, but it's the honest truth because I don't, I'm not the kind of person that has to shave all the time. I shave maybe every two or three days. The, these products are really good and I've really enjoyed it. And it's kind of opened my eyes to um, taking this thing that I don't enjoy doing in the morning and making it actually kind of enjoyable because they, they just, they smell good. They feel good. They're just really high quality products. So uh, Harry's, what is Harry's? Harry's actually fixes a problem that you know most of us do have. We, we're paying too much for overpriced razors. And like I said, shaving isn't fun. Uh, the scrapes, the dull blades, it's expensive. You know, blade runs four dollars. A guy who shaves every day, that's not me, but plenty of <laughs> plenty of you guys do, spend hundreds of dollars a year just on razors. And when we go to the store to buy them, sometimes we have to deal with you know, locked up plexiglass cabinets, all that kind of stuff uh, to, to do this, the uh, the pains of going to a brick and mortar store to buy uh, these kind of products. Uh, Harry's is a company that's attempting to fix this for us. And they do a really, really cool, uh, take a really cool approach to do this. It's high quality razors, about half the price of, of the big brand blades. Harry's actually makes their razors in their own factory in Germany. They engineer them uh, for sharpness, for high performance, and then they ship them for free to your front door. And because they make and ship their own blades, Harry's is actually a more efficient company, which means they can give us factory direct pricing. And Harry's guarantees your satisfaction. In each kit, you get a razor, the razor and the blades and everything is just super high quality. And so, uh, versus so anything that I've been using that's just felt cheap in comparison. It's so, it's so funny because I got all excited when I saw Harry's was the sponsor because, like you, Jason, totally independent of them becoming a sponsor, like maybe a month and a half ago, I, I paid full price. I ordered it because I was just tired of being stuck on the Gillette mock what number you know program and <laughs> yeah. razor blades being thirty dollars to get a pack and all that sort of stuff. And I'm you know and I just comp I got the kit. I got the fifteen dollars starter kit. Yep. And I've been happy ever since. It's been it's uh, it's you know it's so great is that like like you I don't shave that much. I shave maybe once a week if twice a week. I let I let the stubble grow in and I shave on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Um. The I shave so infrequently that I can afford now to essentially get a new blade like every three times I shave, nice. because they're only they're so cheap, you know. Right. Like it's great, yeah. So they're awesome. I love Harry's. I can't. Yeah. I, I'm right there with you. I can't. I can't praise it more. So. Um. Yeah. I mean, clean, close, comfortable shave. You yeah. know, it's. Uh. I mean, for for me, it, it works great. Like I said, I don't shave a whole lot, but um. When I do, it's it's an enjoyable experience. And uh, as you can see, uh, Father Robert likes to shave between his eyes uh, and his forehead. So, you know, it doesn't just have to be your chin. Or Don't your limit yourself. Don't limit yourself. Yeah. Shave it all. <laughs> uh, and there you go. The price is is awesome as well. Harry's costs half as much as the razors in the store. So you can check it out for yourself and uh, compare for yourself. Uh, they also have a new aftershave moisturizer that protects and hydrates the skin. So really cool stuff. Go check it out for yourself. Go to harrys.com, get $5 off your first purchase with the code AAA. That's H-A-R-R-Y-S.com and uh, enter the code AAA at checkout and uh, you'll get $5 off your first purchase. Check it out. I really uh, love this product and I'm Agreed. going to continue using it and uh, be a part of the service because it's fantastic. We thank Harry's for their support of All About Android. All right. Now that we are shaven, let's uh, get into hardware. All right. So we've we've talked a lot about news that hasn't happened yet. Rumors. We've been talking a lot about rumors the past few episodes. Let's talk about something real, Gina. HTC is dropping the camera hardware. This Boom. actually happened last Wednesday. <laughs> we got to talk about it on Twig, <laughs> no, but we missed it on all right, good Android. Right. This is why all the good Android news obviously happens on Wednesday. Yes, it does. Um, <clears throat> HTC uh, announced two two bits of very camera focused hardware. So the first one is the HTC Desire I. That's like I as an eyeball. Um, it's got a plastic body, so eh, 522 inches, 1080p uh, display, 2.3 gigahertz Snapdragon 801, 16 gigabytes of storage, uh, micro SD, boom sound speakers. But this is the big thing that the I has. It's got a 13 megapixel 
rear facing camera and front facing camera. So this is the first phone that's ever had a, a 13 megapixel front facing camera. This is like the selfie phone, right? You're going to take a great selfie from your front facing camera um, in, in addition to your rear facing camera. The i also comes with this software called the HTC i Experience. It's got a bunch of photo related uh, features. You got split capture, which will take the front and back camera at the same time, which I'm sure works really well since they're both they've both got the same kind of number of me megapixels. Photo booth, uh, crop me in, which places a foreground image on a different background image. Might be kind of weird, but maybe kind of fun to play around with. And the Desire Eye is going to be one ninety nine on contract with AT and T and T Mobile and Verizon by the end of the year. So souped up front facing and rear facing camera on. It seems like a, like a pretty a pretty premium phone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. The other piece of uh, of camera focused hardware they announced, which is very intriguing to me, is the HTC Re. Uh, it's Basically, they're, they're, they're billing it as a consumer or amateur version of the GoPro. This is a periscope-like handheld camera device, uh, which is supposed to be ultra portable and durable and water resistant. It's got no viewfinder. It does not look like a camera. It looks like a piece of plumbing pipe. Um, or an and it <laughs> Clips to, for mounting things onto things, records up to 16 megapixel images and 1080p video. $200 by the end of October. Look at that thing. I kind of want that thing. I want that thing. <laughs> Even though it's got no no viewfinder, though. I, I think that it, blew, it connects to your phone somehow. So I'm not sure if you see, uh, if you can get a viewfinder on your phone or not. But that thing just looks cool. Yeah. So what do you guys think? Uh, what do you think about the Desire Eye and the and the and the Re? Oh, look at the shiny button on the back of the that Re looks there. So weird. That looks so like that's weird, like right. I feel like that's enabling upskirt photographers way more than they should be. <laughs> that's not. I don't know. That's weird. That's that, that kind of freaks me out. That's like this little thing where people are going to be, you know, taking pictures. That's that's kind of bizarre. Or there's like a little guy on the other end that looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the future of photography right there in that picture. Yeah. yeah. The I'm not periscope sure form do. factor is so weird, but also really intriguing to me. I yeah, don't know. I kind of I kind of want to try it. It's very different. Uh, Mateo, what do you think about these? Well, I'm not sure if I should be worried because I have a kilt and I live in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> but the the design of the Desire Eye, uh, Desire Eye, I, I really do like. Um, it's It looks good and I like the two-tone colors, so the red edge and the white front. That looks quite cool. Mm -hmm. And... I don't know if I'll get this. It is on my the network I use. It's an exclusive here in the UK to three, the mobile phone network. Uh, I'll think about it, but it, it it is a good good idea to have as good a camera at the front as at the back, uh, especially when taking selfies with a cat. <laughs> was it the Oppo the Oppo Find? I can't remember. Was there was, it was a... the Oppo N? series so yes that had the flippable camera so you so you could have the high the same res uh rear facing as front facing camera and there's rumored to be an n3 the newer version of that being released very very soon that'll that'll also have the flippable camera so more so it's it's still obviously on the fringe yeah there you go there you go uh still on the fringe but more so we're seeing manufacturers pay more attention to the front facing camera in some way and realize that this air quotes selfie thing is a hit with people <laughs> um and you know the front facing camera always sucks yep people are taking so many pictures with the front facing camera so why not make it better uh 13 megapixels seems a little overkill but at the same time i guess why not you know why can't pictures of you be just as nice as pictures of them uh so there you go and then uh the re yeah the re is it's a weird, weird looking device. I guess I can kind of see it though, right? Like if you take the viewfinder out of the equation and you just assume that this thing's sole purpose is pointed at something and take a picture or shoot video and there's no like, uh, there's no messiness inside there of pulling it out, unlocking, going to the camera, blah, blah, blah. It's just like, oh, I need to capture that right now. Like that's kind of cool, but it's another thing to have to remember to bring with you. So but, yeah, but, but yeah. also the lack. I, I get I get the the speed to shoot. You know, like not having to unlock and do whatever. But like, I wonder what the hit rate is going to be of, photo of photos with that. Like, just because you're pointing. I mean, how yeah. you know 
how wide of a lens is there to capture exactly what you're getting? What you know what I mean? Like it totally. just seems weird. I, I imagine you get a lot of like foreheads and things like that. You know, like, <laughs> right? right. Just, you know, yeah. Yeah, I wonder I how like wide I, the angle this is. This is the kind of thing I would like clip to my kid's bike or like take underwater or take surfing, like something, you know, where I want to get pictures of stuff, uh, you know, that I need to clip it on and, and, and you know, it's good GoPro scenarios, but without, you know, having to buy a GoPro. Right. But $200. Yeah. It, yeah. Right. You know, I, mean, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's a lot of money for a lot, not a lot, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. An amateur version of the GoPro. I, I, that for me, that's ninety nine dollars. Right, two hundred is is. I mean, you know, some people they're paying two hundred dollars for their smartphone. Uh, yeah. This is yeah. Right. camera. Yeah, but pricing gets very weird when you compare like across categories too. So, I don't know. Somebody who's a real camera nut and just wants something that's quick and easy. You know, maybe two hundred dollars is worth it. I don't know. I know. I'm not sure how I feel about the re. I want to see it. I just don't know if it's necessarily targeted towards me personally. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, but interesting. And HTC is trying new things. Uh, so that's good because, we, you know, we, we talk a lot about liking HTC and hoping that they succeed. Uh, so they got to set themselves apart. And this is one way to do it. So very cool. Um, now, if you loved the Droid Max a few years ago, Motorola hasn't forgotten you, supposedly. The manual uh, service manual for the unreleased Motorola Droid Turbo Leaked, revealing the successor that's likely to hit Verizon, of course, as droids do. 5.2-inch display, dedicated capacitive nav buttons, uh, key charging, wireless charging, a 21-megapixel camera. It's interesting. Wow. Uh, wow. Of course, Moto, you know, Moto's, uh, Moto Actions display, Connect, all on board. And kind of realizing as we, as we see this, th there were the rumors there for a while of the Nexus 6 and then a smaller Nexus. This is probably what the smaller Nexus was. Uh, the 5.2 size, you know, version of uh, Motorola's next kind of device. But, yeah. So there you go. Uh, Droid Max, man, a couple of years ago in the, in the Android world was, you know, <laughs> was one of the best performing uh, battery uh, devices out there. And, and as such, it was pretty darn popular. The Note has kind of taken over, I think, in that regard, but... Anyone gonna get themselves the uh, the next Droid Max, the Droid Turbo? Uh, Turbo. Is it the saw a five point two inch display, twenty one megapix yeah. megapixel? I mean that 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 definitely is the opposite of the six. You know, right. like that's on the other end of that spectrum. It's uh, that's interesting. I don't know. I, I I'm it's, my my curiosity is peaked. I'll just yeah. put it that way. So. Mm. Yeah, so there we go. Um, oh. And 5.2 suddenly sounds small, which it's not. It does <laughs> it? Does. <laughs> There's going to be a the, backlash to the big phone and there'll be smaller phones. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I think those the smaller phones aren't going away, I don't think. I got I to gotta tell you, I was I was at dinner Sunday night actually with Eileen, Eileen Rivera and, awesome. and Tom, oh. Tom Merritt and, yeah, and, and uh, their friend Nate. And we we're at dinner and um, and this other guy at dinner, Nate, had a uh, he had the iPhone 6. And it was the first time I saw it in the wild, and that thing is just enormous. The six plus it's, or the six? Yeah, the six. The six plus. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the six it plus. Is, it, okay. It, it's enormous. I mean, and and I shouldn't I shouldn't react to it because I've seen the note. I've seen the note in action, and for whatever reason, I'm used to seeing that. But seeing uh -huh. the six plus in the wild, I, like it took a minute to let you know. And also, it feels really weird. Doesn't I, I was holding it, and I was holding Tom's iPhone six. Uh, the smaller one, and both of them felt very weird in my hands. Like they don't, they I, not, not very good grip, but. Uh, not, yeah. not good ergonomically, like they not good ergonomically. Yeah, yeah. they need, they needed something, something like like premium leather or some sort of high some, end some material. Sort of, some sort of dimpled plastic back would be good. Maybe, kind yeah, of like a yeah. band aid of some sort. Oh, hey, like, there we go. Just like that. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> this is a Samsung S5 with a yeah. red mocodile back. Mocodile. Mocodile. Nice. <laughs> All the way from China, I purchased it on AliExpress. Great service. I also got multiple plastic wooden backs. Wow, cool. Wow, that's something. Well, so, so yes, Mateo, is... so, so clearly you like the stylish phone, right? Like that's, that's what you prefer to carry, right? Yes, um, my Italian genetics demonstrate themselves in my <laughs> aptitude towards accessorizing. <laughs> so it's, it's an enormous market globally. Yeah. Uh, the number of people who then customize their phones to make them unique. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you go to AliExpress and do a search for uh, 
Samsung S5 or Samsung Note 3 back battery cover, you'll find a wonderful selection of devices that can be yours within three to 50 working days, depending on your postage options. <laughs> yeah, but those are, those are going to be far too affordable is the problem. Those are far, far too affordable. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, well, Mateo, maybe I could convince you into switching over to a maybe a little more high-end phone uh, from the, the fine folks at Vertu. Uh, they've got a new phone. Uh, by their standards, a more affordable phone, uh, the Vertu Aster, which is a more afford affordable version of their signature touch device. And let me tell you, if you could have, listen to this, all right? If you could have a Android smartphone, all right, that was made in England out of hardened titanium, 4.7 inches, 1080p screen, all guarded by sapphire crystal, front-facing stereo speakers with digital Dolby Digital Plus tuning, that's something you'd be interested in, right? Absolutely. <laughs> If it had a 13 megapixel Hasselblad tuned sh uh, uh, camera with dual LED flash, um, and it's also got a 2.1 megapixel front facing camera. And on top of that, for the back of the phone, you can have your choice of calf leather in onyx lagoon or blush, karung snakeskin, snakeskin in caviar, tangerine, or raspberry, or my personal favorite, the cognac ostrich backing. Uh, <laughs> Right? And not only that, but it's running it's running KitKat. It's run, it's got a Snapdragon 801 chipset. It's got 64 gigs of built-in storage. It's got LTE, uh 19 band LTE. It's got uh Bluetooth audio streaming and NFC. It's got a 22 uh 2250 milliamp battery, wireless charging. Sounds like a pretty darn good phone, right? And you're talking my I, language right now, Ron. Yeah, well, Jason, I, I'm, all, I'm all sold on this. Um the thing is, I'd need to probably test drive how threes or something, uh, some or the kitty ta kitten taxi game play on. <laughs> <laughs> preferably, well, listen. Preferably, 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 I would like to test drive it in a Bentley. Uh, <laughs> Cute for the second link. <laughs> so well, apparently luckily, there's also a, a Bentley edition of the Vertu Aster, which comes with a complimentary case. Yes, uh, they, they've done a, a specific Bentley version, complete with the Bentley logo and all that sort of stuff, and a, a refined leather kind of backing to it that gives it that Bentley look if you need to, you know, if you just need to pair your phone with your car, uh, the Vertu uh, Bentley. Because we all do. We all do. Yeah, exactly. Admit it. But <laughs> the important thing is that, th keep in mind, this is affordable. It is. Okay. So this, I can send you home with this phone right now for just six thousand nine hundred dollars, <laughs> or nine thousand seven hundred dollars, somewhere in between there, depending on your choice of the back material. Again, I recommend the cognac ostrich, um, <laughs> unless you have a Bentley and you need to pair your phone with your Bentley. And at that point, I can't even find the price of the Bentley one. So uh, there you go. <laughs> True. Wow. The, there's no price on that. But the, what I found interesting about the Bentley edition is if you scroll down and look at the recommended accessories, they have a Vertu V wireless charging pad, which is using the wireless Qi or wireless QI standard. And that looks quite cool. I may not be able to justify the cost of the... Oh, oh Vertu. Yeah. Oh, Vertu's oh, website. They can't not afford us web the developers. We put all <laughs> our money into the phone. <laughs> it's using wireless Qi charging. It should work with Nexus devices. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, how so how much is this, this charging pad? Like $500? <laughs> the, char the charging pad. <laughs> Probably something like that. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah. So I saw somebody in the chat room say, oh, Vertu, always producing these super expensive phones that nobody buys. Somebody must buy them. Someone's got them. Buying Someone's them. buying them. The, no, they, they are very popular. Um, if you go to Hong Kong, uh, the status symbol smartphone is a Vertu. As an iPhone is almost unseen. So anyone who wants to flaunt it or wants a good quality phone and has the disposable income will buy a Vertu. They're, they're very, very popular. Wow. And well, obviously they, they all tend to have the red sapphire button as well, mm -hmm. which is the concierge service. Yes, that's right. Which is, well, 
we'll, really we'll see cool. how popular they remain now that the, now that there's a lower class version and now it's affordable. Oh, it's all downhill and, and, from here. <laughs> exactly. $6,000. Like, oh, oh, yeah. You're going to you're going to bump into somebody at the Soho house and be like, "Oh, did you see he has an Avertu Aster? Not cool." <laughs> 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 then again, this is testament to how awesome uh, the diversity in the, on the Android platform is. Uh, you can find a manufacturer like Vertu, who's doing this amazing high-end device. They're not using a custom operating system. They're not using Tizen or Migo. They're using Android because the ecosystem is what people want, mm -hmm. be it mm -hmm. the high-end people or the Motorola Moto E users. The majority of the apps for the Android ecosystem will work across the board, which is marvelous. If you have $10,000 that you wish to spend on a phone at some point, uh, you know, there's a, there's a manufacturer making phones for you uh, that's running <laughs> Android. That's fair, too. And if You're right. At any moment you ask yourself, how much do any of these cost? You can't afford it. <laughs> right. If you have to ask how much it costs, you won't be able to pay it. You can't afford it. Uh, so there we go. Vertu. Okay, so let's go on the other side of the spectrum. That is the Huddle 2 tablet. Now, here in the States, like I, I know we've heard about Huddle and we've talked about it a little bit on the show but I mean, this is this is primarily a thing, more of a, a big deal in the UK. Is that right, Matteo? And you you did a review of the Huddle too. It is. Um, just for full disclosure, before we go any further, I do work for Tesco, the parent company that created the Huddle, mm -hmm. uh, on a part-time basis, ten hours a week as a tech support advisor. Uh, but going past that, uh, as an Android enthusiast, I love the Huddle One. Uh, so to give a bit of context, Tesco is uh, the, equiv the UK equivalent of Walmart. Right. It's a multi-channel retailer, mainly started off as a supermarket, now has a bank, has the equivalent of an Amazon marketplace, Tesco Direct, through which other retailers sell. And through all their channels, uh, they decided to create the Huddle One, which is a seven-inch tablet that launched in September 2013. And at the time, it was affordable. It was £119, which is around about $160. It had slightly better than first-generation Nexus tablet specs and almost an, a stock Android experience. It was very, very popular in the UK because Tesco was selling it in their supermarkets and loyal customers who had their loyalty points could get it at half the price if they had the points available so it was 65 pounds so it was very affordable and very very popular a, a couple of weeks ago tesco announced the huddle 2 the second generation of the huddle and they've improved the design the hardware the software it's a completely new device but it's trading on the strengths that the first generation huddle had so it's affordable. It's uh, This is a much more powerful tablet compared to the first generation one. And I really, really enjoyed it. I really liked it. I did purchase it with my own money. Uh, I plan on using it as my main tablet uh, after the Nexus 7, uh, mainly because it has two features that the Nexus devices don't have. It has expandable memory with a micro SD slot, and it has an HDMI out port. So you can connect directly to a television uh, through an HDMI cable. So Tesco are selling this tablet with a very close to stock Android experience. They have their own uh, Google Now inspired launcher running on top of Android KitKat, but it's very, very close to stock Android. The interesting thing is that Tesco uh, made a point of making more colors available now. Just as we were joking earlier about customization and having an exclusive color or setup uh, for your phone, Tesco are launching the tablet in eight different colors and have, a com uh, have just as many colored cases. And they're boasting the fact they have 128 color and case combinations available. Everybody's so doing the customization thing these days. It's a yes. 
Yeah. But then again, the hardware is is a surprise to to many people in the Android community because this device is running on an Intel chip. So it's an Intel mm -hmm. Atom quad core processor with two gig of RAM uh, that has an Intel GPU as well. It has a 1920 by 1200 screen, so the same screen resolution as the Nexus 7 2013 mm -hmm. and the same screen resolution as the LG G-Pad 8.3. And it shares the same screen size with the LG. So good overall tablet, very responsive, apart from a few few slowdowns, uh, which I, I mainly attribute to the launcher. And it ran all my usual apps very, very comfortably. So Audible for audiobooks, Pocket Cast for podcasts, uh, all my usual light gaming and social networking. It does everything I need it to. So I, I'm, I'm really impressed by it. And it's been already been very popular in the UK. Today's news is that uh, Paul O'Brien has successfully managed to root the device. That's less than one week from the retail release of the device. <laughs> and uh, so, as Simon Osborne correctly pointed out on Twitter today, it's just a question of time before someone gets Ubuntu to run on this, because it is running an Intel processor. So. It's only a UK market product, but it's a sign of things to come because Intel had, had been warning us earlier uh, at Mobile World Congress that they were going all in on tablets and phones. And then at IFA, they started pushing into Asus's product portfolio. It's interesting to see that we are seeing uh, Intel chips inside tablets, especially uh, since Google are going to be supporting this with Android L. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, interesting. So when the first huddle came around, was it was it kind of seen like I, I know if Walmart came out with a Walmart <laughs> Android tablet, I'm pretty sure people would be pretty skeptical right off the top. And then for them to, you know, kind of pull out and actually it's a really great tablet uh, that would be kind of, you know, an interesting defeat uh, <laughs> against that that, <laughs> that mentality. Um, was it kind of the same with Tesco? Is it well, did people well, expect this to be a great a great brand or otherwise? And at the beginning, it took everyone by surprise because Tesco has its own separate brand for its own brand, Consumer Electronics. Huddle was a completely new brand. Um, some skeptics said it was very close to Kindle and it assonated with that. Uh, but no, it was actually was very well rev uh, reviewed, uh, both by the tech media and by the Tinkerer community. Uh, Modico, the Modico forums, for example, had a section for the Tesco huddle and instructions on how to route it and remove all the Tesco software on the device. And it's been a very, very popular device. Uh, from what I understand, over 750,000 tablets sold in the UK market is a very high number uh, compared to the competition. And Tesco are hoping that the huddle too is going to be as good a big a success because it's the gateway to all their digital and online services, not just shopping for physical goods, but they also have an online video uh, retail channel called Blinkbox, online music, and online ebooks. They compete a bit across the board with a lot of other providers. Uh, obviously, this is a tablet aimed at the family, and both Gina and Jason, you might be interested in this. They're competing directly with Kindle on this, uh, they have very good parental controls. So in my blog post, I linked to my Google Plus album with screenshots of the how simple and easy it is to use the parental controls, which not only control your web browsing categories of websites and websites which you can whitelist or black blacklist, but also times of day you can use that use the tablet, and the as as well as that the other parental controls you'd usually expect on, on a tablet. And they're leveraging uh, the usual Android profiles. So you create a separate profile for your child, select the rules for what date, what times and days of the week uh, they can use the tablet. And it's, it's just very, very good, in my view, for family, family uh, members if you want to limit their use or limit their exposure to the, the big bad web. 
Yeah, and we're seeing more and more of that uh, as well. The uh, Samsung Galaxy Tab S that I just reviewed on today's Before You Buy, twit.tv slash BYB. Um, same thing, you know, it has a kid's mode on it. And I, I just, I think that's a great feature in there that parents specifically are uh, more and more going to get used to looking for, I think, uh, because it is very useful for kids. So uh, cool stuff. In a way, it will limit the number of princess apps you find in your own personal. <clears throat> <clears throat> Maybe. <laughs> that, w- that remains to be seen. Uh, awesome. Well, thanks for talking all about the Huddle 2. Um, I'm sure there are ways to import into the U.S. for anyone interested in doing that. Um, but it sounds like it's a pretty inexpensive uh, tablet and uh, certainly a good option. I've heard a lot of good Is about it? it. so. And it's, it's likely to be uh, an indicator of what's to come in the wider Android market. Uh, the manufacturer who makes this uh, device for Tesco, I found out, is called Pegatron. Yeah. You may have heard them. Mm-hmm. Heard of them. Uh, they will most likely be churning out very similar devices with other names and brands on them. Gotcha. All right. We'll keep our eyes posted for that. Uh, let's take a break and thank our second sponsor of today's episode that is legal zoom so when you're planning for your future uh you know you do financial planning you get insurance you do all these things that make you feel adult and grown up let me tell you we've done all this all these thinking uh all this thinking at my home uh to get real peace of mind you've got to make sure your family and finances are legally protected so where do you turn for legal help that you can trust especially that you can trust, LegalZoom.com. For over 13 years, they've been helping Americans get personalized wills, powers of attorney, living trusts. Uh, LegalZoom also helps file LLCs, S-Corps, and uh, more to protect you against personal liability. The company was actually started by some of the best legal minds in the country, and they make it painless for you to get the legal protection that you need. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to someone at LegalZoom and they'll talk you through the process. Uh, for myself, you know, my wife and I, shortly before we had our, well, right around the time we had our first daughter, about four and a half years ago, we realized we needed to do a will and testament. That makes you feel grown up right there is when you sit down and, and kind of f- figure that all out and, and uh, actually put the wheels in motion to make sure that you have a will and testament set up uh, just in case something happens to you. And uh, we did it through LegalZoom. This was four and a half years ago, and it was the easiest process. And, you know, sure enough, a few days later, we got a box in the mail, a big box that has all the documentation that we needed. And uh, we have that stored away, you know, in a safe place. And, uh, yeah, just nothing but great things to say about LegalZoom. Uh, from that experience especially, it was just uh, really easy, and it, particularly because it seemed like the kind of thing that, you know, it seemed like a bear. Like, it seemed like the kind of thing that you just don't want to do, and, oh, we got to take care of that, but how much time is it going to take? And it really didn't take that much time, and it was an enjoyable experience. So um, as enjoyable as creating your will and testament can be. Uh, protect your family and protect your future. Go to LegalZoom.com. That's LegalZoom.com and use offer code AAA to receive $10 off at checkout. You can get legal help through independent attorneys and self-help services at your direction, but they're not a law firm. It's very important to understand that. But we do thank LegalZoom for their support of All About Android and the Twit Network. It's good to have you guys on board. All right. Let's uh, check out a few apps. I love the finally app update. Finally. Finally, Finally, Jason, tell us. Finally, a Chromecast update now allows you to modify what shows on your idle Chromecast. Choose your Google Plus photos as public folders, not uh, from your private backups. I would love the ability, even though I understand why they're not, not allowing you to do it, I suppose, but I would love the ability to just take all of my instant backups and just say, pull from this huge pool of photos so that I can see all the things that I haven't like explicitly said, put this into a, a folder, but they don't give you the option. It has to be in a public folder. That would be dangerous. It would be dangerous. I realize, <laughs> but you know, but, uh, I personally, I would love that. That's like my entire photo archive. So I'm cool yeah. with it. Uh, weather, satellite images, featured photos. Really, if you don't t- change anything, uh, you'll see what you're used to seeing, all of those beautiful pictures that Google puts into your Chromecast feed. Uh, but you can exclude some of those and include your own. And, yeah, it's pretty great. I actually love Finally. it. Finally. Yes. Finally. Yeah, it's awesome. 
It's well, the kind of thing where you could just leave your TV on and just have the Chromecast running with the photo. Like, that's cool. Well, it's like, a, and, yeah. The, I mean, the photos they provide are great photos. There's a lot of Trey Ratcliffe's photos mm -hmm. and a lot of other, you know, you see it. But, like, sometimes you want to see your photos, you know, so finally. Yeah, the generic. Yeah. Yeah. You turn on your TV. This is what this is what I realize is like we'll turn on our TV to do something, and then it'll warm up, and then there's like a picture that we for, forgot about. And instead of doing the thing we were going to do, we're like, oh, look at that picture. Do you remember that? And you know, you start talking about the picture, and oh yeah, I remember the day we did the little. And you're like, oh, that's that's cool. You know, yeah. it's a nice little yeah. bonus. So, it's that little. It's that little bit of personalization, a little bit yeah. of making the device your own. That it, that and it's like the Apple TV had it for years. That was one of the first things the Apple TV had, where it would do the slideshow of your iPhotos. Yep. Uh, you know, this is, it's just a subtle little thing that that makes it that much more special for you. Yep. So. Agreed. Uh, yeah, but uh, another update that makes something a little subtle little change that makes the Google Play Stores uh, that much more special. Uh, we got update 5.0.31, which gives us even more material design. Uh, some other little subtle touches, repositioning of, of the what's new that's called out with a dark green color. Updated icons in the widget selector that match the icons we've seen in the Nexus 6 image links and some other uh, other little neato little changes. They've got new icons for widget suggestions. They've got new notification icons. Uh, looks like another step of refining and updating the Google Play Store to go along with the new world order that we're going to find out about tomorrow, hypothetically. Yep. So, yep. And yet another brand new icon for the Google Play Store. This is the, <laughs> it's at the top of the post, Brian. If you scroll up the brand new icon, I think this is the sixth iteration of it. Yeah. So there we are. Oh, yeah. I remember it. Each and every one of them. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> that first one. Wow. That first one was rough. <laughs> <laughs> right? Look at that. Who Thanks. wants three dimensions? <laughs> right. I know. That's really 3D. Anyway, so. <laughs> So, yeah, so you, you can download directly off Android Police or your phone will probably get it uh, yeah, at some point. So already. just keep checking. Yeah, the changes are great. Uh, yep. I love it. More and more material. All right, and Gina, you got the next one. What's this all about? Yeah, so Google supposedly is working on a new way for consumers to trial apps on Android. So this is a uh, this is according to a report by the Information. Uh, so Google's got this new trial program supposedly that would basically allow developers to release a micro version of their app for users to test out and hopefully you know turn that into a purchase if they if they like what they see. And I, I mean, I haven't seen how this works or how it's supposed to work. I'm an Android developer. I, I thought about this a lot. I'm not really sure. I don't know if this is the way to go. I, I don't know what, uh, you know, releasing a micro app, I, I don't know what that's about. I mean, I, I kind of feel like there, ha I do agree that there has to be an easier way for consumers to try out apps and then pay for them if they like them. I, I don't quite feel like in-app purchase does it you know you'll even see the app i have in my in the arena tonight there's a free version and then there's a pro version and you have to download this separately and there are two different listings in the play store and it's a little confusing i feel like there 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 definitely needs to be a solution i don't know if a micro app trial is it but uh but this is interesting i mean the play store doesn't generate nearly as much revenue as the as the app store like like by like, I mean like it's like 20% uh, like a day by day. I think it's like 1.1 million per day for Google Play like versus 5.5 million per day for the iOS app store. And I think there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, I, I just, so this, 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 this would be interesting. I don't know. How do you guys feel? Jason, would you, would you be more likely to purchase an app if you were able to do a micro trial? I'll call it that beforehand. Or do you feel like this is just adding, I don't know, more <sighs> Complexity to this process. I feel like that kind of that's a little more confusing than what we have right now, which is download it, and then, I mean, you know, it, let's say it's a paid app, download the paid app, pay for it, and then you have two hours. We now have two hours, by the way. It used to be fifteen minute window. Now it's two hours. Uh, you have two hours to just go back there and say refund. Although maybe some people don't know that in advance, so they don't do it. But are they really going to know about the testing out, you know, micro app functionality either? I, I don't know if that improves the situation i'd be curious to see how they how they roll it out um exactly what do you think mateo um i think it's it's fine for uh, large-scale development uh, google might need to give developers especially the the smaller uh ha development houses or independent developers a bit of guidance on how to create those demo apps how to either lock down or exclude content 
because it's quite quite a, a, a difficult task to do so, in in my view, mm-hmm. because you, you're you're starting to mess around with the integrity of your your binary, and that that can be that can be tricky. Yeah, it depends obviously on on what your app is and how, what it does, but I I, w- I would be worried if I were an independent developer doing everything myself, creating a demo app of a fully functioning app and then having to support both of them. Right, or is the demo built into the full one, and then it's like a yeah. reveal of functionality? I don't. Yeah, it, it does sound kind of messy from a development standpoint. Yeah, it's weird. I, I mean, I like the idea. I like the idea of giving away to people to trial it, but yeah, it just seems like at what point do you draw the line as to what to share and what not to share, and what you know, <clears throat> you re, you don't want customer dissatisfaction when they download an app and use it, and then they like using it, and then it stops. You know, like <laughs> yeah. when you reach the boundary, you know, like that's that's probably not a good experience. So uh, interesting, though. I mean, yeah, like, and Webby too in the chat room has a good point. I mean, right now we have. A lot of, and this is actually an approach that I like right now, which is here's a free version of the app. It does this with an in-app purchase. You can unlock the full, the the pro kind of functionality. Then it's all, you know, part of one app. The upgrade path is within the app. So at that point, likely you've made your decision. You said, you know what, this is great. And I do want to kind of extend my commitment to the app by paying $2 and I'll do it through the app and boom, you know, it's no, no must, no fuss. No, no. What I would like, I would like, and there's no reason why they can't do it. And 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 my app in the arena touches on this a little coming up. But why can't they put some sort of timer within the use of the app and be like, okay, hey, you've used this app now for an hour. What do you think? Mm-hmm. You know, keep keep it, or trash it, buy it. Say, you know what I mean? Like, some of you them know, do if, that. Yeah, I, that that would be a more clever way of doing it. I think across the board. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a, I mean, a free trial. I think that I think just the price turns people off. You know, like right. so, yeah. so so you sell you're selling an app. You look, oh, it's not free. I don't know if I want this. You're not thinking, well, refund window. I have to make sure I have to decide. And to, you know, I just don't want to have to set up my Google Wallet. I just want to s- install this, and then if I, it, you know, and then like like Ron says, then you have it for two hours, and then you get, hey, buy or not, and if not then poof, the app goes yep. away, right? Yep. Um, that might be a better a better way to do it. It does it does feel like uh, the the like this cost money buy now is is a stopping point for a lot of people because they're like, I'm just, you know what? I, I'm like, I'm not going to spend money on this because they're not sold on it. You know, they don't know mm. if they want it yet. And I do think that one of the big reasons the app store, even though it's been many years now, but you know, you have this like huge market ma- mostly based in the United States that had already been buying music through iTunes, right? So like iTunes already had your payment information. So like the leap to app wasn't a big one, but with Google, you know, you, you have to set up payment and, and, you know, it's a much larger international market and, and whatever. So I think that there, there are definitely challenges there, but it seems like that would be the thing I would want. That said, I mean, if making the micro app, you know, was, was relatively simple as easy, as easy as say Android wearing my, my app, like I, I would do it. My app is, a, a, you know, two bucks in the play store. I'm sure that that stops a lot of people short entirely. I've definitely had gotten emails from people saying, please refund me. I, and I missed the window, but I, I really don't want this. And, and that's a pain. And I do. Um, and so it does seem like there's a better solution here. I just don't, I just don't know about the micro trial and, and, you know, for, for my app, and I think it depends from app to app. I, I think that it's more obvious what a micro trial would look like for some apps more than others. Yeah. Yeah. I'd agree with that. Uh, so again, we'll see. This is information that the the information uh, <laughs> has <laughs> has released. So we'll see if and when this rolls out. Uh, we've gotten used to seeing the in app purchases uh, price range. Has that helped anybody else out, or is it still nope, 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 <laughs> nope? Like, okay, cool. Zero or one cent all the way up to a hundred dollars. Good to know. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Uh, but we'll probably find you know something like that in the next few months about this as well. Let's uh, take a quick moment before we get into the arena to thank our final sponsor of today, and that is Smart Things. Smart Things is the easiest way to control and automate your home with your smartphone, and it's just awesome the way that it works. It's kind of a modular approach. With Smart Things, you can secure your home for a fraction of the cost of a traditional home security system. You can stay connected to your family, get notifications when people come and go. You can control and automate your lights, your appliances from wherever you happen to be. You can be notified if there's unexpected entry or movement in your home. Get instant alerts to prevent a small leak from causing a major flood. 
And uh, SmartThings makes getting started very easy. There's three home uh, smart home security kits, which are designed to help you protect and monitor your home. SmartThings has also introduced four brand new solution kits, which help you achieve specific goals like automating lights, saving energy, protecting your home from leaks, like I said. There's even a maker kit to connect and integrate your Arduino projects if you want to get kind of geeky with it. Uh, each kit includes a SmartThings hub. I actually have a SmartThings hub right here. Right here in this box. What's in the box? It's a smart things hub. Uh, nice little tight compact hub here. And this is where kind of all the magic happens. Everything is kind of distributed through this hub out to the inter the interconnected devices that you have throughout your home. Uh, this has, The hub has everything you'll need to turn your home into a smart home in as little as 15 minutes, including new and improved updates of SmartThings Zigbee sensors. And in addition to SmartThings own sensors and outlets, you can also add hundreds of other home automation devices from popular companies you've heard of, GE, Schlag, Honeywell, Eon, Nest, Thermostat, Dropcam, uh, Philips Hue, Wemo, Sonos, and more. Uh, but the really powerful thing about SmartThings is that it's an open platform, which really means it's compatible with hundreds of devices, and there are thousands of things that you can do with a product. To discover them, you, all you need to do is simply download the free SmartThings iOS or Android app. That's one app, and uh, limitless possibilities through that app. You can kind of discover all the cool things you can do with that hardware. Uh, to get started creating your smart home, visit smartthings.com slash twit. You can save 10% off the purchase price of any home security or solution kit by entering the code TWIT10 at checkout. When you use TWIT10, solution kits start as low as $170 and home security kits start at $350. You also get free shipping within the U.S. That's smartthings.com slash TWIT. And remember to use the code TWIT10 at checkout. And we thank Smart Things for their continued support of all about Android and the Twit Network. All right, it's the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's get into the arena. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. Whoa, that was like oh. reverse awesomeness right there. <laughs> That was pretty cool. Uh, last week, we had three apps. I'm pretty sure. I haven't looked at the results, but I'm pretty sure I know which one won. Gina, yours was pretty awesome. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Daddy Long Legs. Boom. Yes. There you go. Yes. Yeah. Giving a yep. run a run. Giving Ron a run. There you go. This is Making it do. interesting. I Making knew it was interesting. I knew I like it would it. happen. I knew it. I knew it. Uh, Daddy Long Legs wins by a landslide, practically. 62% of the vote. Uh, Mini Wear Launcher comes in second at 22%. And Commute Traffic Report comes in third at 17%. Note. Love the Marky Mark re reference, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. I completely forgot I put that in there. I'm always like figuring, like, what do I put up there? Do, do I have to get some, <laughs> I don't know. Marky Mark and Funch Funky Bunch. Um, okay, so this last straw poll had 260 votes. One thing that we have not talked about on the show is uh -oh. that Google unleashed upon the world and its Google Plus service a polling mechanism. Now, a few weeks ago or a few days ago, I put out a post on Google Plus to gauge interest. Of course, I'm, I'm broadcasting this out to the platform that I'm asking to poll, you know, to, to place their votes on. So, yes, I'm going to get an overwhelmingly positive return. Ended up getting 1,170 people that participated in this poll. And that makes it very enticing for me and for us to think about uh, trying the arena polls in Google Plus. So for the next couple of weeks, we're going to try it out. We're going to test it out. I know some people are going to be upset with this because it does require you to have or maintain a Google Plus account in order to get involved. But as you know, we, we always talk about on the show, a lot of us are on Google Plus already. We have Google accounts because it is Android. And uh, humor me for a second. I really want and we really want the polls to be as effective as they possibly can. Realizing that this might limit uh, some people from using it. I fully realize that. At the same time, it might yield a lot more results. So let's try it out and see how it goes. So this week we are doing a little bit different uh, polling system. You're still going to get the same easy URL, uh, so you won't have to remember anything different. But let's try it out. I was the big loser last week, and uh, I'm not sure that this app is necessarily going to secure my victory immediately because it's geared towards developers, but Sometimes I like to, you know, feature feature an app that I think might be useful for developers, and that's what I'm going to do today once I 
brighten up my screen a tiny bit here. Okay, so my app today is called Clean Status Bar. Most people would be like, I don't know the problem that you're talking about here. What, you know, what is the problem? Well, Clean Status Bar is for developers that are taking screenshots of their apps. A big problem is that if I was taking a screenshot of this, my app right now, see that status bar up there? It's messy. And it's a, you know, it's a random time, 649. It's got all those notification icons up there. It's messy. And I don't want those to be you know, a distraction for people that are thinking about downloading or purchasing my app in the, uh, in the Play Store. So this app actually allows you to alter what you see up there. If I turn it on, boom, I've set it to 5, 5 o'clock. I have it right now so that it's only showing battery. Battery is full. So, you know, often I've, I've posted screenshots on online before for different things. And, you know, my battery is like in the red. And I've had people like be actually distracted by the fact that they can't not look at the fact that the battery is red. And if you're posting, you know, screenshots for your app, you probably don't want people to be distracted at all. You want them looking at the important stuff, right? So you turn this on. You can customize it so I could have the, the Wi-Fi icon up there. Maybe, you know, my 3G icon or, you know, I could set this to a 24-hour format. Um, I could change the background if I wanted. Maybe my app is skinned a different background color, and that's what you can do there. And then this is kind of cool. You can set the API level. So if what you're doing is you want to present screenshots of your app that's targeted specifically at, you know, KitKat or, or uh, you know, L Developer Preview, and it's going to change based on what the default is for those icons up there. So yes, I realize this is totally a, a very like specific and limited use case. Developers might find this handy. And I think it, it's probably going to save you time because if you're a developer and you're doing this and you had to do this in post-production, it just involves like Photoshop work and everything like that. Why well, do that when it's pretty easy to do it this way? So That's it, awesome. I yeah. love it. Clean status bar. It's free. And uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I wonder how many people this appeals to, but I thought it was kind of cool, and I think it'll it'll be really handy for some developers out there. It, it definitely appeals to me. I, I I I'm going. I've already downloaded it. I'm going to see if I can use it in a day to day to basis. Nice, fantastic. There Just you go. think if the if the Googler who had posted the uh, lollipop icon <laughs> screenshot uh, used exactly it, this, this, this would have never happened. Totally protect protect yourself from getting fired at Google. <laughs> by using this app. See, any Google employees, you should be uh, voting for, for a clean status bar because I'm, I'm cool with your job there. You know, you should keep it. Uh, okay, so Ra, who's up next? Would it be Ron? I'm up next. All yes, right, Ron, it is me. you go. <clears throat> All right, so um, I've got an app that's called Off Time, and it's actually uh, interesting because the app does two specific things. One is the main thrust of the app that they're advertising it as, but the second thing is the thing that I found most interesting. So what it does is it basically gives you insight into your use of the phone, and we've seen apps like this before, but they've done it in a very classy, very nicely designed kind of way. And then it gives you that insight into the use of your phone, and then also it allows you for ways to identify points and gives you tools to help you to unplug and not use your phone. So, Jason, if you go back to that main screen, um, you can see here is a snapshot of your day on your phone, and it's going to tell you, you know, your device activity, um, how much time you spent with your phone. Um, they give you a little score of what you know of of what your your off time score is that they calculate. Uh, they sum up your communication and the number of apps you use. It actually makes me laugh because uh, I remember back, and I'm going to name drop here, so bear with me, but way back in like 2007 or 2008, I went to a live recording of Twit in, in San Francisco. Leo was doing it at the Zeeum uh, in San Francisco, and huh. I, was sitting, I was sitting in the audience with, uh, with Merlin Mann, and uh, it was right after the iPhone had come out. Android hadn't come out yet. And Merlin was making many, many jokes amongst the nerds that we were hanging out with about how he wanted to create an app that uh, would count every time you checked, you checked your phone, every time you checked an app. And that's basically what this does, which is kind of funny because even me, I didn't realize looking at my day um, and I can hold it to the camera, but you can't really, I guess you can't really see it or whatnot. I mean, it's better looking things. But so far today, I have checked my phone 120 times and I've spent two hours with my phone, right? Uh, which when you think about the fact that I spent six hours on a plane and four hours in my office, I spent a lot of time on my phone so far today and that's just not a normal day. Um, and it also told me that today so far I've accessed Hangouts, my SMS messaging app 54 times, 
which shows you that I do a lot of texting. Right? Um, um, but so it goes deeper than that. And I don't know, Jason, if you want to go, Brian, if you want to come back to Jason and his, uh, his screen, if you uh, click on, uh, on the lower right-hand corner apps, it will give you a number of app accesses over the last seven days. So in my particular case, you know, I've accessed, you know, Hangouts 95 times, Talon 89 times, Gmail 87 times. It gives you an idea of what apps you're using. Um, if you go over one more, it gives you information on your contacts. Um, do, I, do I want to go there? No, you don't have to. But um, okay. it can tell you who you're contacting the most. Um, and then on under highlights, it gives you really interesting insight into your, into your use of the phone. So, for example, for me, it says I, on average, I write 112 SMS messages per day. Uh, which is crazy, um, you know, and on average, I make one call per day, which is I've been using this for the past three days, which I think is funny. It shows you how I use my phone. Um, so that's just the, that's just the inside aspect of, of it. But then there's this other aspect of it, which allows you to go off time, which uh, it, and if you hit the menu, if you hit the hamburger button, uh, you'll get that menu on the left side and you could say take off time. And basically what it does is this little wizard that lets you walk through what you want it to, what you want off time for. And this is basically how do you shut down your phone to allow you to either work or spend time with your family or just unplug or so, those are the canned options. You can build another profile like meeting or, you know, or, or commute or something like that. And what it will do is it will allow you to adjust the profiles and limit the use of your phone so that you can say, listen, when I'm off, when I turn off time on, don't let me go to Twitter. Don't let me go to Facebook. Don't let me go to any social media stuff. Don't let anyone text me. Um, don't let anyone call me. Or you can also say, uh, don't let anyone text me except these three people, you know, that sort of thing. Um, nice. yeah. And, uh, and so what you can say is like, listen, I'm working. I can't be disturbed. You can also set it up so that it will auto respond to text messages that will say, Hey, got your message. I'm working on something. I'll get back to you in an hour. Um, and it's a really nifty interface and a really great kind of way that kind of, uh, controls your phone. And when you have off time on, it kind of takes over the screen and it says, Hey, off time is on actually, Brian, if you want to go to the Google play store, they've got a, uh, they've got a screenshot of that, um, where you can see it in their screenshots. Um, the last one where basically it'll show you, it says, Hey, relax, your device is at peace. You're doing focused work. You can set a start time. So I'm I'm gonna work until 4:38, and and it's gonna tell you how much time is left, um, and then also tells you who you can receive SMS messages from or what apps you can access during that time period. Um, you know they really play up in their little video and stuff like that about the the way our phones distract us and the way the phones take us from being in the moment, which I think is a problem, but also a productivity standpoint. I mean today I was working, I was actually scrambling to try to get stuff done so I can get to, get to my train for the show, and I had someone who was just texting me and it wasn't. You know, it wasn't that important text. I didn't have to be responding to them. If I had off time running, he would have gotten a message saying, hey, I'm working. I'll get back to you. And I wouldn't even have to worry about it. Um, so it's free in the Google Play Store. It's the kind of thing where if you have challenges with time management, challenges with staying focused, um, or if you have, um, you just want to have more insight into how you're using your phone and understanding what, how much time you're spending on it, what apps you're using and who you're talking to and that sort of thing. Um, it's a really interesting kind of app to check out and for free, it doesn't get better than that. So, uh, off time, totally for free. It's not a battery drainer. I've been, I see in the chat room, somebody asked that, um, I, uh, been using it for the past few days and it hasn't, my battery life has been the same. Um, so it's, I think it's all it's doing is just sitting there in the background and just monitoring what you're doing, using a lot of the information that's available just in the Google play services and give you a, a data visualization of your usage or your phone and give you tools to be able to disconnect. So. Nice. I love it. Yeah. Pretty cool. Good and it looks really nice. It, it looks really nice. Doesn't it? Yeah. It does look great. Um, mm -hmm. and it's just. The video is also yeah. really well produced, like in the play yeah. store. It's a good video. So. Nice. All right. So that is off time also free check that out and then mateo i have your app installed i'll show it off on a tablet this time excellent uh, my app for this week is the skyscanner hotels app so uh full disclosure i do work for skyscanner as a test engineer uh, this is our application for searching for hotels on your android device and it works on tablets and phones so you can search by location. So Jason, for example, you Petaluma or Phuket. Uh, oh, very nice. Phuket, yeah. No, I, yeah. I need a vacation. 
Um, you may not be able to find a hotel on the 14th uh, because it's already tomorrow, as it is already here. Oh, it's no, no, I've got a couple. I'll, I'll get out to Thailand. No, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe it'll be next week by then, but <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that's the Skyscanner uh, Hotels Meta Search working for you, and it offers you a very rich visual option uh, of view viewing your hotel and the results, and then seeing the providers who are offering you that hotel, so that you can have multiple providers. If you do a search a bit further into the future, you could have as many as 25 different providers offering you the same hotel room. And then it's down to you to choose who to use to book your, your hotel room. Uh, so that's an, an example of you clicking on a, on a hotel and looking at the imagery. If you go back into the results screen, we've made it so that you can, uh, in the results screen, yeah, you gonna... can view the images of the hotel before you actually go into the results. So you can maybe do a bit more exploring without committing to going all the way to the booking page. Oh, yeah. Looks like it's pulling and up some of the other results right now. There we go. Now they've all kind of kicked in. Oh, nice. So it's very yeah. rich, nice HD pictures. It makes it easy to sort of do a bit of exploring if you're planning a holiday or thinking of, of traveling. And also at the top, we also have a map option. So you can start looking at hotels uh, based on availability, so green green spots, and also points of interest on the map. So this is uh, leveraging our, our powerful meta search and all, also other data points we have. So it's just a, a slightly different way of doing your hotel search with a pretty app. So we, we all like shiny apps. I believe this is one of them, and there's been a lot of work put into it. This is version one of our app, and we, we will carry on looking after it and improving it in the future. Nice. That's great. Now, now I, now I really want to take a vacation to forget. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. I want to stay I, there. I'm really pretty. I'm, I'm, I was using it to, to actually look at hotels in Petaluma next year because we were planning next year's holiday. Uh, current location. Oh, wait. No, I'd... Okay. Yeah, apparently I hit the wrong thing. Um, cool. So this is Sky Scanner Hotels. It's available for free in the Google Play Store. Nice. And um, it's, it, it's out there. Yep. You've got the QR code. Right on. All right. Sky Scanner Hotels for free. There you go. Thank you very much. Check it out. I will. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and then finally, Gina... Uh, this is this is one app that I had on my list somewhere, but I never had a chance to actually play with it, so I couldn't show it off because I hadn't had time to play with it. But uh, go ahead and talk about it. Cool, cool. Yeah, so my pick this week is a frame lapse, a time lapse camera. So this is really cool, cool app, very easy to use. Lets you take time lapse videos, which means that you you take a video, a long term video of something that's happening sort of slowly or something that's a really long time and you just want to compress it and you take the video and it takes basically a snapshot every n couple of seconds or maybe every one second, depending on how you set it. And then you play the video back and it speeds it up and you get to kind of see it, see, get get a quick time lapse video. Um, this is actually kind of the Android answer to Hyperlapse, which was just released on iOS, uh, which got some attention. But Framelux is, is great. It's got tons of options. So you can see there, you can say, take my video for the next 10 minutes, for the next 30 minutes, for the next seven seconds. And then you can say, you can choose your frame rate. You can say, take take a, take a, show, uh, a picture every one second, two seconds, three seconds. Um, you can set, if you're taking a really long video, like if you're watching, you know, if you're taking a video of a flower opening up or the sun traveling, traveling across the floor. Uh, you might want to set, you know, a, a lower quality video so you don't use too much space. Um, but yeah, you can see in the video, I've taken a few myself. I'm not a, I'm not a great photographer, so they're like very scintillating time-lapse videos of me typing on my computer. Um, but the ones <laughs> in the video here um, in the Play Store, you can see are really amazing, like clouds moving, the sun moving, and flowers opening. So these are just like really, really long videos that you could speed up over time. And they're really neat. And this is really, uh, this is really cool. This this app has made me really want a a GoPro kind of style like mount. 
so I could stick it, you know, on my mm -hmm. on my bike or my bag and like, you know, video my commute or, uh, or 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 anything like that, and then kind of speed it up and see it and see it really fast time. So these are all videos created by Frame Labs. Um, just really, really, really neat stuff. Um, I've always kind of been interested in time lapse videos. It always seemed like way more of a pain in the rear to create than than I was willing to spend. But frame lapse makes it super easy. And like I said, there's tons of options there. There's tons of camera options, and it just outputs to your to your videos, and uh, and it's free. There's a free version, and if you really like the app, you can uh, go get the pro version, which is a separate listing in the Play Store, which costs uh, two ninety nine. So yeah, oh there you go. Oh, you took it. So okay, so there's there's a time lapse <laughs> oh, of Ron me, talking. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, let me tell you, this is an exciting video of Ron talking for a second. Time lapse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually, I would love That's to be able to load an episode of AAA into Frame Labs and then have it make. You can't, you can't load existing videos into it. You have to actually take the video. Uh, right. But right. yeah, that, that's good. The I, sped up version. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how this works with the HTC Re. Would there be a yeah. way to import your pictures and then use the footage or, or pictures that you took with the re into frame um, lapse? It should work. Yeah, it should work, right? Because the re, I believe the re just like connects wireless. It's basically just a wireless camera that connects to your phone. So you can choose the re as your camera. I feel like this would be a fantastic app to go along with the with the re. Um, so yeah, you can turn on the torchlight. There's tons of there's tons of options here, mm -hmm. which I really like. Cool. I found that I had to do a lot of sort of trial and error to kind of see how the videos came out and what kind of settings I wanted. Um, and uh, the OnePlus One has great battery life, but if you're taking a really long video, you might want to have it plugged in. You might want to have it on a tripod or on a stand if you're trying to capture clouds or sun or whatever. Um, so you do have to kind of set it up and think it through a little bit. But um, but then that's it. You're done. Like you're, you you tap done and, and you've got your video. And uh, and they, cut, they come out pretty nice. nice. So that is frame lapse, time lapse camera. Awesome. Uh, frame lapse, so that's free. There's a pro version for two ninety nine that mm -hmm. I think you can upgrade to through the app. So, yep. uh, cool. All right, so that is it for this week's uh, arena. It's time for you to vote. Uh, same same URL as normal, uh, but today's episode, of course, triple a poll dot com slash one eight three a a a poll dot com slash one eighty three to register your vote, and we'll check. You know, we'll we'll try out this this whole Google Plus approach and see see how it goes what's what's interesting about this is that um it's no longer anonymous yes mm, you can see is... who vote you can see who voted for what yeah now i have to make a decision uh-huh yeah. oh, no. decision matters uh, yeah. just a little bit more uh, brian who's your favorite oh wow i see <laughs> <laughs> We'll see how this goes, but you know, doing it this way uh, allows us to, you know, reshare it on Google Plus, of course. Put it onto the All About Android community page uh, if you're if you're involved in the All About Android community on Google Plus. So, you know, we'll see we'll see how this goes. We'll try it out for a couple of weeks, and uh, I'm sure I'm going to get some emails from some folks saying no, don't do it. But I'm also going to get some emails from some folks that say yes, do it. So, uh, we'll see. I kind of wish it had the live update with like the pie yeah. chart and everything that Straw Poll has also. Yeah, the pie pie chart would be kind of nice. Yeah. Not that it makes a huge difference, but Yeah. We'll see. My results are already different. Oh, is it? It doesn't doesn't refresh. Oh, yeah. You know, I guess it doesn't do the live re well, is it live refreshing? I had to refresh it. Oh, well that's a bummer. So yeah, it's not it doesn't seem live. Although it's got that nifty it's got some nifty effects, but yeah, it's not. It's it's static. So yeah, well, that's kind of a bummer. Okay, I'm well, glad you didn't put our names next to the apps because I, you know, yeah, it should, it should be about the apps. Yes, yeah, agreed. absolutely, absolutely. I agree. Um, cool stuff. All right, well, we'll uh, we'll check in on that next week and see how that goes. But that is it for this week. Another episode of All About Android is uh, finished. And I, I bet you tomorrow we're going to hear a lot of interesting news. And maybe not. This could be the kind of thing where we're all expecting something tomorrow. And then tomorrow happens and we're like, huh. <laughs> okay, well then when? <laughs> <laughs> That's so we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, Matteo Doni, really appreciate you coming back on the show, man. Thank you for uh, joining us once again. Well, thanks for having me again. Absolutely. It was great fun. It is now uh, almost, well, it's probably 3 a.m. for you. And so first, I'm sorry. And second, 
uh, tease up whatever you want p to point people to, and then go to sleep. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, right. Um, my personal blog, todoleo.com, is where you can read my Tesco Huddle 2 review and any other ramblings about geekery I have. Uh, my Twitter profile is at todoleo. My Google Plus profile is plus Matteo Doni. And later this month, on the 30th and 31st of October, I'll be attending the DroidCon Android Developer Conference in London, England. Uh, so if you want to come and have a chat with me or just geek out about Androids, come and uh, find me. I'm usually the one wearing a Skyscanner hoodie. Nice. Excellent. Look for Matteo there. Thank you again, sir. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks, uh, Gina, what you got going on? Oh, I'm working on a thing. It's called Think Up, thinkup.com. Yep. It's uh, daily insights about you and your friends on Twitter and Facebook. You should give it a try. We got a new landing page going on there. Thanks, Brian. Um, yeah, and when I'm not working on Think Up or here on All About Android, I am co hosting This Week in Google here on the Twit Network, which airs on Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern and 1 p.m. Pacific. And you should come on and join us and watch tomorrow. I'm going to be on with Leo and Jeff uh, and guests, maybe. And that'll be a lot of fun. That's right. You should. Uh, cool. Thank you, Gina. And Ron, mm -hmm. thank you for, for coming back. My pleasure. Good to be back. I'll be back in the studio next week. Uh, I survived <laughs> the New York Comic Con, and I saw a bunch of uh, All About Android uh, audience members in New York. Uh, a couple of people stopped by the Image Comics booth and said hi to me, and that was nice. awesome. We, we, yeah, I showed cool. them my G-Watch that I'm not wearing, right? my G-Watch. And, uh, and we high-fived about Android, so that was pretty cool. Thank you, everybody <laughs> who came out. Uh, you can go to about.me slash ronxo where you can find links to my Google Plus and my Twitter and my Instagram. And I got to add a link to my thinkup at ronxo.thinkup.com. I love thinkup. <laughs> Um, yes. And by day, I was over uh, in New York for on behalf of Image Comics. You can go to imagecomics.com, check out all the great comic books that we've got coming out. Uh, we've got a brand new comic called Witches, which is very spooky for this Halloween series, uh, Halloween season, so you want to check that out. Um, but yeah, so uh, we got digital comics galore on Google Play, Comicsology, our own website, imagecomics.com. So if you like comics, check it out. Nice. Check that out. And Brian, what about you, sir? Well, earlier in the show, you mentioned people might have to make a, a Google Plus account to join in the community stuff. And I figured maybe we should tell them about the, the know-how community we have, which is the show I do on Thursdays with Padre. And we've got about 7,300 people in here, and it's just a really cool place to post questions or uh, think of projects you'd like us to do or anything. I mean, a lot of the questions that people post get answered uh, not by me or Padre anymore. It used to be that way, but uh, just a, a big collection of know-it-alls, and so that's more incentive for people to get on the Google Plus if they haven't already. Uh, but otherwise, follow me personally on uh, Twitter at cranky underscore hippo. Uh, plenty of hippo news going on there. I think recently found out that Pablo Escobar uh, left some uh, hippos back uh, back in the day, and now they are not only the most dangerous creatures in Africa, but also Colombia. So that's your your hippo fact of the day. Pablo always awesome. leaving hippos all over the place. <laughs> what about you, Jason? That is so Pablo. That is so Pablo. Uh, you can find me at about.me slash Jason Howell. Follow my musical exploits at yellowgoldmusic.com where mm -hmm. you can see that website right there. Mm -hmm, that's right. Um, oh boy. Okay. It's, 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 <laughs> we use that music for like every review that we do on the on the network too. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. It's, it's, it's awkward when you're doing a show and, the, and your music is playing. I gotta say. It's, it's so we don't get sued. <laughs> that's true. Okay. That you you that are that welcome you know to play of. my music. <laughs> I did a review of like a vacuum and I put a Bluetooth speaker on it and made it like a DJ Roomba and I just made sure to use all of Jason's music. <laughs> That's awesome. And it's good music nice. too. Well, so. thanks. I Jason, listen, that. next time I'm ne next week, we need to step aside and you need to understand your legal rights about licensing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should talk. <laughs> Maybe you should talk to legal Zoom. Hmm? Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> true. <laughs> wow, I've learned something new today. Uh, cool. Well, you have my permission. Oh, Ryan. thanks, Jason. Yes. Oh, what yes. are you doing? I'm sorry. Am I signing my life away? Yep. Uh, you are. It's on video. <laughs> you well, heard it. If you want to play my music uh, on shows, yellowgoldmusic.com. Um, 
let's see here. Two things. Best of the, tw uh, the best of 2014 episode of All About Android is something that I have to start taking seriously. But you can take it seriously right now by going to twit.tv slash best of and submitting your favorite moments from this year. Uh, the more details you can provide to me, the easier it's going to be for me to edit something awesome for you. So uh, I really hope that, that you're able to do that. And also, I have another show about Android. It's called Android App Arena. Strange. Isn't that sound familiar uh twit.tv slash arena i review four to five uh apps a week uh usually on some sort of topic and compare them against each other and maybe you know grant one the the reigning you know the reigning champion of that category uh for that week uh so you should check it out twit.tv slash arena lots of apps happen in there as well it's kind of a companion to this show so i hope that you enjoy it still jealous of that intro jason you're jealous of it? Well, compared to what we have on this show. Oh. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> this Aww. show has a, a classic intro. A classic yeah. intro. <laughs> it's coming back around. It's retro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's it for this week, everybody. Thank you for joining us once again. It's always good to have you here. Voicemails can be left at 347-SHOW-AAA. You can send us email at AAA at twit.tv. Uh, find us on Twitter. We're at Android Show. We are on Reddit. It's twitaaa.reddit.com. You can find, of course, our community page on Google+. Plus. Just search for All About Android. You'll find it there. Uh, show notes of past episodes can be found at twit.tv slash aaa, as well as YouTube and iTunes. And you can catch us live every Tuesday, uh, starting at 5 p.m. Pacific, live.twit.tv. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android. <laughs>